everyone, this is Kiwi Nina Mori, and I'm gonna do a brief explanation about my first experiences with wig making. I'm by no means an expert or even intermediate. I'm just kind of doing this for fun and experimenting because buying wigs lately has been really expensive and sometimes I'm not even sure I like them when they come in for the characters. So I just want to experiment and see if I can create the look I've always been um, having in mind. So, I've previously made a yarn wig before and I didn't really keep it because it wasn't the curly texture that I liked for a lot of my characters. And so I've started using wool and I, I've had one alpaca wig that I've actually worked on. So, so far I've made five wigs for my crew which is almost half of the dolls I have full body right now. So I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> pleased, I guess, <laughs> that that's less effort I've had to hunt down for wigs that like will look good on them and then find out, no, I don't like them in that anymore. But so the one alpaca wig I've made was for Marlo, which is this one. So it is a curly shuri alpaca. Um, and it's like a carrot red. So he used to have um, an Angora wig by Amadeus Studio, and it was really long and beautiful, and I loved like the deep red color, but I've also imagined him more of a ginger red, so I wanted to make one myself that was shorter and easier to manage, because I mean, if, if his style's very bohemian, I just, I imagine him constantly having to pick twigs out of his hair, <laughs> and this might just be easier for him to manage. But, so this was my first experience making an alpaca wig, and, um, the fiber is not as easy to work with, I found, as, like, wool, because wool is very forgiving when you're making the part for the center of the head and getting the wefts to lay down. Cause for alpaca, you have a lot of combing and cleaning to do, like, the hair is so fine that you just constantly have to pick at it and you lose a whole lot of the fiber when it when you clean and comb it but I, I got this fiber from a friend um and I bought it off of her and it came like like this so just like in a bag all crumpled up but this was even after it's been washed and dyed so it's just <laughs> like a hairball and just tiny little curly wefts you kind of have to untangle and then comb again and it's just like it's knotted at the end so it's you have to cut it off sometimes or comb through it if you want to still keep the same length so it was just a whole lot more effort and it was like really dirty even with a bunch of cleaning so I didn't have as much fun with that I was like okay maybe alpaca is not for me I love buying alpaca wigs but making them myself is just <laughs> It's just a hassle and I think I'll just stick with buying alpaca if I'm going to have a character with alpaca hair and but his wig was pretty easy to make um, I can't say that my part is really good so like he has like it helps to have a the wig cap made out of a similar color to what the hair is going to be because you're going to have parts that aren't going to uh, be hidden by hair and then you're going to see that so I've <laughs> it's falling apart here but I, I use like knee highs and stockings for my head cap so it's like just not as sheer because if you're putting glue on it it's just gonna go right through it so I kind of just use like the thicker part because also it has like elastic here and when you make the wig it keeps some bit of mobility and can stretch around the head versus being a hard solid cap that's just not going to give it all because I've I've had angora wigs that were made um sort of like on a styrofoam backing so I, this this is a wig I bought and it's kind of like it's solid and there's no I mean you can like bend it but more like it will crack the cap if you do so when I've made it with the with the stockings so this is like what it looks on the inside for my wigs you can see like the little lines from the elastic stretching but it's like more flexible so I can 
move it around the head because if I try this on a different head I won't worry about it cracking and forcing it down and it's it's easier to cut through because when I do the center part you need to tuck the hair inside the cap so I'll, I'll show some pictures up but so this wig I have like a center part and then it also has bangs so I, I cut into the cap and sort of tuck the hair away into the middle and then glued that down so that I don't have awkward glue showing from the top on either side of the middle part. Uh, so this is one wig I've, I've made out of the wool and it's, it's just, it's cute. I love, I love this curly texture and it's just like the blending of colors is what I like most about mohair and uh, wool because it, it seems very natural and I mean it is a natural fiber. So I made this one for my Alara head. So she, she's sort of um, <laughs> not like a Viking but just definitely more fantasy based peasant type character so I wanted her hair like wooly and like wild for her um she's actually on a boy body right now because i'm waiting for her girl body to get um to finish paying on that so this wig actually turned out really well and it was my first time doing bangs but you kind of just <laughs> glue all of the wefts around the head in like a circle but leave sort of a u shape when you're drawing on the cap of where the bangs are gonna be so you know what area to cut shorter in front of the face. I think I'm gonna do a video like next time step by step of the entire process because I, I took photos while I was doing it and it gives you some sort of idea as coming from a beginner like what are some things that work and, I get, and didn't work but Shepard also has a wool wig made and so his is gray and I put some ties in it because it's very Viking. But it's, it's just so much more forgiving because wool is thick and fuzzy. So you don't see the cap pretty much at all. Like you can just easily move it. And after you've combed out the wool, it gets fluffy. And you can just paste that onto the cap and underneath the wefts in between all your hair pieces to either get some volume or to hide more of the spots that you couldn't cover. Then Sanguine, I made her wig. Hers is a long like red wine, sort of like Marlo's old wig, but her head is practically 9'10 and I was not going to be able to keep fitting Marlo's wig on her so I had to make one that was just for her and I put more braids in that because they're all from the same story so it's all sort of it, it's a fantasy story so I wanted all of them to have this hair that looked like they didn't have access I mean well to modern day hair oils and hot irons but I mean they can still use their own forms of how they took care of their hair back then. So hers is um, a center part with no bangs and that was pretty easy because I also just cut down the middle and tucked the hair in on either side. And it sort of has a gradient down where it's a darker shade on the ends. And then my, I think my favorite wig is o Oleander's. So his, he he has wool too, but I kept his wefts uncombed, so they kind of look like dreads, since he, he lives in the forest and he's like a guardian of the forest. And I blended multiple colors of like, of the wool pieces. So he has like purple and green and orange and tan in here. So it's very whimsical and natural. But yeah, his also has a center part, which is very <laughs> hidden <laughs> because of this fiber is so thick and natural looking. So like the, the fibers I've used, I, I order from the Naughty Shepherdess on Etsy. 
and she's just a sweet person like she she offered to um, do custom dye colors for me because I found that she didn't have all the colors I was looking for so th this is like what the fibers look like coming from her before I work with them but she hand washes and dyes all of her fibers so they and combs them so they come to you practically in the wefts you just need to to glue it on the wig and I know a lot of other uh, vendors send you the hair just in a blob of <laughs> matted hair and you're supposed to organize the lengths as you see fit and it's just I me being a beginner I knew I was gonna mess that up and that would have been a waste of money for fat for fiber so I liked having this already pretty much arranged it your stump some little specks of um, like plant life still in it because I mean they're sheep and they're always gonna have something on them but it's way easier to pick out because there's not it's just it's not as dirty it's just like oh well this clearly just caught caught in the hand so it's easier to manage and she just I mean she's made it so flat and easy to just pull off and you're just like well there's your left you glue that on the wig and you you've gotten the first layer down but she sells all of her pieces in like half ounces so it for each of my wigs, it took about a whole ounce for each wig of the combed fiber. So I wouldn't say if you're buying un uncombed and unsorted wool that it was it's still going to be an ounce because most of that ounce will get combed out in when you clean it. But so I just buy two packs of this and I'm set with that one wig. But for the, the glues I use, I, of course I use like regular glue for like filling in spots and making sure the hair lays flat after you initially glued it. Um, I, I use Mod Podge to make the cap solid. So you'll use, you'll use like the stockings, put it on the head with rubber bands, Mod Podge it for like five, six layers, however comfortable of hard hard thickness you want for the cap and then I use fabric fusion for attaching my west to the wig or liquid fusion and that's just what I prefer because I know I since I sew a lot this is just the glue I can use that I know that has some flexibility and the movement in it without ripping because if you use a, a harder glue that will crack every time you put it on the head that's a different shape than what it originally was it's just gonna make all the west fall out but this is just some things i picked up i have a friend who who showed me um how to make the the yarn wig i first tried so i've kind of just applied some of these rules to that so i really i think that friend is <laughs> fawn prince dearest dearest rabbit on instagram and I also watched a few videos of other people making wigs, so I, I kind of understand what's going on, even if I can't perform it when it comes to styling. But this is just the beginning, and I want to try other fibers. Cause I, I do have some modern characters that I want to try out, but all their hair is like straight and like highlighted or cut in a unique way, and I just I. Don't want to tackle that yet, but I look forward to trying. So I'm. Um, this is just a brief overview for anyone who's interested in trying to make a wig but doesn't know where to start and just wants to hear of another fellow newbie wig maker's experience. But thanks for watching. Now you get to know more about like where their hair comes from when it shows up in other videos. But I'll see you guys next time. Bye.